take a few moments to visualize the th three theorems in this section. First is area of a rectangle. We've seen this so many times before, base times height. Now we know the, either of these sides could be the base and the other would be the height. Let's just make AB the base and BC the height. Um, let's, let's remember if this represents five inches and this represents three inches BC, that would, these would be linear measurements, something you do with a tape measure. But this square right here, this is one inch by one inch. This is a square inch, a different measurement, square inch versus linear inches. So I could easily count them all up and I can see the 15. I can visualize that. I could perform the arithmetic. I have five times three, it's 15. And you'll see often in throughout this section, uh, square inches represented as inches raised to the uh, second power because I, I could treat them just like numbers. Inches times inches is square inches. You may also see it written the old school way with words 15 square inches. Either way, remember this is a square inch. Now we'll extend what we know about rectangles to a parallelogram and this is what we call shearing a rectangle. This looks very familiar to you because you did this in your geometer sketchpad lab. Remember we constructed a rectangle. We made variable sizes on this so we could change the length and the and or the base and the height and uh, controlling the aspect ratio effectively. And you can see here we've got the base and height, product of base and height, and that of course gave us the area of this figure. And what shearing was, is what we did before, is when we took it like this. Now, if I take the rectangle and I slide it across this line, it is shearing because this rectangle I'm sorry, this parallelogram now has the same base, AB, and the height is the perpendicular distance between the two bases, and that's not changing. So you'll notice this entire time the area remains the same. It remains exactly the same as the area of the rectangle. So take a rectangle, shear it, and you have the area of a parallelogram. Now going back to our shearing diagram where we took the rectangle and sheared it into a parallelogram, we could do something similar and that would be to take a triangle, just a single point along this extended line. And you see this green triangle has the same base and it has the same height. However, it is not exactly the same because I take the base and height and divide by two. Now we've We'll demonstrate that again with a little proof, but you can see it right here. In the case of right triangles, it's pretty clear that it takes up half the space of the rectangle. And I could put multiple triangles on here. And in each case, each of these triangles has the same base and the same height. So each of these has the same area. Well, let's build a demonstration for the formula of the area of a triangle, one half base times height. I'm going to start by placing a point F on DC. So I'll limit it to the triangle created like this. So I'm looking at triangle ABF, which is superimposed on this rectangle where it shares a base. Now, clearly, if, if F were to be to coincide with D, say they, that were just one point, I can clearly see I've got two triangles congruent by side, 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 because after all, the, this side is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And that means that this triangle is one half of the rectangle. But that's, that would be a special case. I could demonstrate it also at some random point between D and C. If I were to draw this segment, which would be congruent to BC and AD as well, then I could say, hmm, what if I could take this triangle and this triangle. These two are clearly rotations. And these rotations 
these rotations would be congruent to, let's say, the two component pieces of ABF. And we know that because that would be a case of hypotenuse leg. Both right triangles, notice the matching tick marks there, and they both have the same hypotenuse. So once I've got that, I could conclude that these two green triangles must add up to the same as triangle ABF. Another way of saying that is ABF would be half the area of the rectangle ABCD. And there you go. One more way to look at it.